Okay, uh, if you look at the timeline of uh, I, uh, uh, your IA due dates, uh, you'll see the next thing due is um, December 4th is your, um, your bibliography. Uh, and I want you to have six to eight uh, sources, uh, scholarly sources. I define here scholarly sources are peer-reviewed journal articles which are written by scholars or professionals who are experts in their fields. In the sciences and social sciences, they often publish research results. So am I saying that I want you to have, you know, six to eight uh, peer-reviewed journal articles? No, not really. I just want to emphasize that you need, you need um, quality sources. Let's say you're writing about <coughs> immigration <coughs> in the 1880s, the Gilded Age, and you have a New Yorker ar article from the 1880s, uh, a primary source. That's fine. It does not meet this definition, but it's fine. Or you have uh, an article in the New York Times from last year about immigration in the 1880s. Uh, does not meet this definition strictly, but that's fine too. I just want you to have good sources, um, credible sources, not you know ask.com or askdrzebra.com or history.com. There are no ancient aliens. So where do you find good sources? Well, I'm sure you're probably familiar with uh, the AVL, the Alabama Virtual Library. But let's look at it. Um, go to the library and uh, AVL and search the AVL here. And you'll see, let's go, let's go college and university uh, to get some higher quality sources. Okay, so you see all these databases. <clears throat> the one you want to use uh, is uh, EBSCOhost. Where is EBSCOhost? Uh, uh, here. Uh, now, there's one here, but that's that's more uh, tertiary encyclopedia stuff. So use the one that just EBSCOhost search. EBSCO. This is a database of databases. Uh, so it, it, it's looking at a lot of the databases you just saw. Um, it's the most comprehensive one there is. Notice that full text here is uh, checked because you want the actual article itself. And you want to start off broad. Don't put in stuff too, too, uh, too um, particular. Let's say you're doing World War um, II. Now, uh, if you do World War II, you'll get, let's see how many sources. Uh, 283,000. So, um, let's say um, you're doing World War II in a particular subject, of course, you will be. Um, you see all these suggested uh, searches here. Uh, you might, If one of those fits, you might want to click on that because those suggested searches are going to be more uh, productive than if you type in something that you just have in your head. Um, World War II and women. Um, 6,000 sources. So, or let's say you're doing something about Hitler. See all these suggested possibilities. But if you just put in Hitler, uh, 51,000 sources. So, um, this is a very powerful uh, uh, database. And you can, uh, you can come and work with me one-on-one -on -one if you'd like to, to help me give you some ideas about how you can search this most productively. Um, so, what about uh, tertiary sources like Wikipedia? Well, you would not uh, ever cite Wikipedia in your paper. Uh, not because it's not good. Wikipedia is fantastic, but it is a tertiary source. So you know what primary and secondary sources are. Tertiary sources are third-level sources that are sort of the consensus, the common, the common wisdom, or... or um, uh, common knowledge. So if something, let's say you were writing in your paper that um, you write that um, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor on December 7th, 1941. Well, you might have had to look that up to get the date, but that's common knowledge. Everyone knows that, and something like that would not require a citation. That's the kind of information you find in Wikipedia. But you should, you should go to Wikipedia. You should look at your subject. Let's say you're doing... Um, well, Hitler. Uh, uh, there is a long article about Hitler, of course, and you wouldn't use this article in your paper. Uh, you wouldn't cite it, 
But you would look at it and look at the bottom. There are it's a big article. Okay, there are uh, all these uh, citations and a detailed bibliography. These are wonderful sources. Uh, so definitely uh, utilize Wikipedia in that way. Um, uh, let's look at something. I had a professor once who thought that Wikipedia was the devil, um, but then she realized she was a medievalist. Um, then she found out that Geraldus Cambrensis, which is a very obscure figure uh, from the... Um, uh, the uh, 12th century um, and she, she looked it up in Wikipedia and she found all this incredible information uh, uh, in, in including uh, citations and a detailed bibliography. This is a very obscure uh, historical personage. So um, Wikipedia is great. Uh, textbooks, by the way, are also tertiary sources and I have several AP history textbooks in my room that you could come in and look up your subject and would, we would find um, uh, suggestions for further reading, notations, uh, potentially other sources. Another possibility is um, the New York Review of Books, uh, which I subscribe to, um, so you don't have this source, but I would be happy to look for you. Uh, let's say, for example, um, um, let's just do... Geraldus Cambrensis is Latin for Gerald of Wales. And, uh, wow, there are lots and lots of references to uh, Gerald of Wales uh, in uh, the New York Review of Books. And these are essays about a subject written through the lens of book reviews. So they can be a valuable source as well as lead you to other sources. Uh, so I'd be happy to look there for you. Um, I can help you find sources. Uh, if you, if you want to if you want to come by, if you're here at school, or just email me, I'd be happy to look for you uh, and to work with you to find sources for your IA.